Hello and welcome. We are live. Welcome, Elizabeth Wood. How are you? Oh, I'm so good. I'm so glad to be here. I have lots yes. of light to share from Ecuador here. Might yes, show everybody just... a little view if that's okay with you. Yo, please. Yeah. Awesome. So we have our view of the mountain here and all the beautiful trees, the sky. Wow. Wow. That's this gorgeous. is my backyard that... at the moment. So you're still up in the mountains, are you? No, I'm else. down here in Dokobamba. And uh, we ah. purchased some land up in Yangana, big, huge mountain. It's very beautiful. That's why I'm a little late today. It was raining a lot, and uh, it took us a lot longer to get home than we thought. <laughs> but this is the nature of the weather here. Uh, it's coming into rainy season, so it's very beautiful. Many, many flowers and birds, butterflies. It's incredible. Wow. Gorgeous. Glad to share. <laughs> mm, thank you so much. Um, yes, yeah, so thank you, Elizabeth, again for being here. My name is Nicola Henderson. Um, I've, I met Elizabeth about a year ago, and I'll share that story in a little bit. Um, and, but first, thank you to everyone that's tuning in live here today. This is going to be a really special conversation. Um, I love Elizabeth to the bottom of my heart and beyond. Um, there's just so much that I resonate with you, Elizabeth, and I'm so grateful to your presence in this world and everything that you give. Um, Elizabeth is a quantum, for those that might not know Elizabeth, I think a lot of the people here probably do, but those who might not, Elizabeth is a quantum galactic anthropologist, a futurist, also a very strong Libra, I've come to learn, uh, <laughs> a Libra sun, Libra moon, and Aquarius rising, which makes perfect sense to me. Um, and also a 2-4 sacral manifesting generator for those human design nerds out there like me. Um, my intention for this series, this gratitude series, and Elizabeth is my last speaker. Uh, Franco De Nicola will hopefully join us, but he's been quite unwell, so we've had to reschedule with Franco. But for now, Elizabeth is our is our closing guest, which is super exciting and perfectly fitting because... Um, you were the first, you were the, you know, the catalyst to the whole crazy year that I've had, really, which I'll share a little bit more about. Um, but this gratitude series is really for me because I just feel so much uh, appreciation and love for the teachers that have helped me this past year. And I wanted to create a space to really honor and acknowledge and recognize the work that they do and they put out in this world on an individual level. Um, and it's so beautiful how this whole thing has morphed and evolved in the short time that it's sort of come to be. And to see, you know, it's much more than just me appreciating these, these teachers and these pioneers that are with us now. Um, you know, of course, it's really about acknowledging all the teachers that we have in life, the good and the bad. Uh, if you will, and um, and also, I think it's it's a wonderful time to touch on as well this sense of leadership because there's so much um, perceived chaos in this world, and and yeah, perceived chaos is a good way to put it. But it's really about presence. I think you know this whole thing of leaders. It doesn't feel in alignment anymore, and that's something that I spoke to Elizabeth about last time. Her and I connected, and she says it's a presence, and I really love that because mm -hmm. it's about being an example, I suppose. And that's probably my favorite thing about Elizabeth is she leads with such pure, with such purity. She's such a. Uh, a strong example of where we're moving into of what of what we get to be like of what it looks like to show up purely authentically and um and completely openly and with full transparency and that and let that be enough and elizabeth does that extremely well and that's we need more people that can be examples of that because um, I think that's what we're all trying to achieve <laughs> at the end of the day. Right. 
Um, so I've kind of um, ad-libbed a little bit here. So I'll uh, I'll move back to, but yes, I, yeah. Thank you, Elizabeth. Honestly, just you, you're such a strong example and I really appreciate what you share and all the work oh, that you do. Oh, thank you, Dora. Mm. I'm just so glad that I get to support beautiful people coming into the next step, whatever that might be. And this one being such an exciting one. And I remember you talking about the series and then it unfolding finally. So congratulations. Yeah, thank you so much. It's been a journey. It's been it's been love filled and amazing. So thank you. So a bit more about Elizabeth. Elizabeth is considered an advanced seer, working on the cutting edge of quantum and galactic anthropology, trauma healing, and futurism. Called the Living Library and Oracle, Elizabeth has spent her whole life studying anthropological theory, quantum physics, ancient and modern medicine, and ancient and modern modern medicine. Elizabeth has two science degrees, including a master's in applied anthropology. I have learned a lot through Elizabeth. And to mention a fraction of the learnings that have been my favorite so far have been really digging deep on polarities like masculine and feminine, worthlessness and arrogance, light and dark. And I love the clear, simple approach to emotional processing and clearing the trash bags of trauma that you teach. Um, now, I fir first met Elizabeth on Wishayla Sananda's summit about a year ago. It was a night to remember, to be sure. I was sitting down with a wine on the eve of my 36th birthday to see what the hell a galactic anthropologist was. And suddenly, <laughs> it is a good question. We're circling right back around to this. <laughs> um, yeah, I had never, I was like, what? Like, I had half an idea about anthropologists, galactic, like, no clue. But I was, my interest was piqued. And through watching the conversation, um, I was triggered into my awakening. Uh, I've always been a spiritual person, but um, not more than just the generic universe affiliate kind of thing. Um, so that night began the journey of a lifetime for me. And it's been a big journey, you know, I quit my job. I left the city. I've started doing work that fills my heart with joy and, um, you know, to have now come full circle and be here with Elizabeth sharing in this moment and honoring you and your presence and your influence is, um, is a gift. So Elizabeth, apart from being completely unforgettable, you are also an inspiration and a, and a great example of how we can show up and move through the world in a really grounded, clear, genuine, and relatable way. Watching someone like you as you share with the world helps everyone else learn how to show up clear and grounded and genuine too. And that is a big part of this whole shift, people getting to know who they are and being comfortable in that. I feel such a strong resonance with you and I am so grateful for you for all the work that you do, your presence and for the strong example that you set for myself and so many other people who are also doing this work. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you. It feels like I get a, like showered blessings right before my birthday. So that's <laughs> pretty great. Yeah, I know. In a few days. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, hey, so my birthday gift to you. And then um, it comes full circle. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Elizabeth, you had me at Galactic Anthropologist. Can you please share what this is and you now have quantum galactic anthropologists so how this all fits in together yeah i like this because i love these this way that it came about is the most probably the most important aspect because it's a branch of science and we have two new branches of science coming up all at once um and I didn't make it up. There's other people who do this too. And so that's the cool part is that we all came up with these same ideas at the same, at the same time without meeting each other. And that's, that's a very beautiful clue that the energy behind something or the powerful message behind something is now hit the global consciousness. And that's really special to me. So in 2016 and 17, I was doing work around quantum physics and how it 
alludes to or works with change in culture. And all the theories that I worked on ended up also being theories that other people worked on. And so there's actually a book out there and I highly recommend getting it called Quantum Anthropology. Um, and it's written by two professors in the Czech Republic. And so the gist of that whole piece is, hey, quantum physics affects reality and we affect quantum physics. We know this is true with the acts of observation that we've been looking at, or especially around photons. And then we have this other direction to go, this more beyond the solar system, but more galactic direction. And that really has a, an assumption that it is standing on in order for that to function. Galactic anthropology assumes that we're not alone in this galaxy. And so that's really key. But with that being said, if you're willing to look at the data and look at the experiences of humankind, it's a fact that we have a galactic situation we're involved in. Now, the reason why this is a fact is because we have tons and tons and tons of archeological and physical and experiential evidence to show that that's true. And the cool part about that then is that, well, why would all these beings be so interested in us? And that's when you get into the us part, the human piece, the human situation in the galaxy. And that's what galactic anthropology is. So that's how the two fit together. And then what we might call applied and cultural anthro fill in the rest of it sort of the normal understanding of the human existence. But for me, having got really deep into the way culture changes, I wanted to know how change is affected. And the only way I could really know the whole picture was to include the galactic and the quantum together. And voila, now we have a more complete situational picture to understand why we're here and what we're doing. <laughs> so I love these two ideas so much. Thanks for letting me share about them. The galactic situation. <laughs> I like that. We're part of the whole situation. It is a situation, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, you know, and in reflection, that was probably the biggest thing was this recognition, you know, is that sparked my awakening that we are not alone. It's not just humans on earth existing and doing whatever we're doing here in this universe. There's, there's, we're part of this massive network. I mean, everything's connected. <sighs> Beautiful. Um, I love how you talk about polarities and share so openly about your own processes with things. Um, like arrogance and worthlessness, and it's helped me feel like it's not such a massive task to clear these challenging programs. Um, and in your last circle community call, you got firm with everyone about processing this polarity and the self-hate program that comes along with it. Um, and I really love how you call it out as the self-hate program, because all of this can feel hard to say. It's only hard to say because it feels shameful to admit that we've hated ourselves at times. Can you please share a bit, a bit about this self-hate program and how people can become more aware of it in themselves? Thank you. Yeah, I think it's, if I was to name like the number one issue that we have now, it's that program. Like, I always did understand that we were in a matrix of sorts, right? And although it's not so physical as like the movies, it was definitely there and a spiritual one. And that's all been dismantled. It got dismantled some time ago, actually, at the end of 2017. And that dismantling um, made it very clear that there was one linchpin to the subjugation of humankind. And that includes the way we've been taught to subjugate each other. And it has to do with what we say the human, what is the human hate program? We have a lot of different 
situations which we might call social, political, economic, and power situations on this planet, um, which all tend to basically feed off of negative emotion, negative trauma, the way that we ourselves are not sure about our own nature and our own power. And they all are based in or use one single specific program to keep everybody in a state of mind control is really what it is at this point. So most of us have heard these programs in, in different ways, but they show up as, for example, blaming humankind for various things. And that one's the toughest one because we do see a lot of change going on on the planet, but the blame piece is now front and center and there's no more data to back it up. Um, and now it's becoming really clear that no, it's not humankind's fault that a lot of different changes are happening globally, that it's actually a solar system and a galactic change that can be tracked that we might call the 12,000 year disaster cycle. And we're right on track for exactly what that cycle will look like. So um, humans have been blamed for stuff that is not technically correct. Uh, then, of course, we have social systems where you um, are told that if you don't pull yourself up from your bootstraps, so that's a very North American idea, then you're worthless. Um, or a false value of humankind. So if someone says, well, how much money do you make every year? Why would that be a good value for someone? That's an insane value. That's psychopathy. <laughs> and that's what this human hate program is based in. Then you have languaging, of course, too, uh, that belittles people in so many ways. So here's how your homework is going to look, folks, today. First, you're going to start thinking about the languages that you hear, all the different ways we put each other down, like by calling, uh, calling each other different names for incredibly precious parts of our bodies. I'll let you think about that one. Um, <laughs> and then, of course, you know, uh, how do you talk to yourself? What's, who's, what's the voice saying in your mind about you when you look in the mirror? You know, I woke up and looked in the mirror this morning and for the first time in a long time, and I was looking actually in like the car mirror because in the land I live on, there's no mirror. Um, and I thought, wow, I actually look pretty darn good today <laughs> for having been camping for several days. But the thing is, is I wouldn't have said that normally. That's not how I grew into myself at all. Then, of course, I want you to look at how your social system really feels if you don't get enough likes on your post how does that make you feel it's built in to make you hate yourself and same with the economic system i'm sure you've noticed what advertisements look like these days and how extra psycho they've got now of course there's a movement to counter it on on lots of different platforms that says uh no filter right no filter <laughs> No Photoshop, no filter. Then look at your physical world. How have you set yourself up with ways for you to examine the personal self? Do you talk about yourself a lot so that you can find yourself feeling more connected to people? Do you have a lot of mirrors? Do you have a lot of extra people around who are kind of worried about how they look and how they're going to fit into society? How do you get your needs met? These are also going to be a clue about this human hate program that's embedded in everything. So in order to unplug it, you know, we have to start learning about ourselves. In order to change something, you have to get educated. So I want you also to go look really carefully at your life and do what our friend is doing today. Look at what you're grateful for. What language is it that you use to be grateful every day? Swap it up. Talk to yourself in the mirror a little bit. Whenever you want to make a judgment comment about a person, place, or thing, including yourself, instead swap it up a little bit. And, and instead of pointing out something negative, point out something positive in your mindset. 
And so this is a way that we can begin to unravel the damage that this human hate program has been having on people because it's literally killing everybody. If you think you're stressed out, if you go to the bottom of your stress, really dig into it. Oh, well, I'm stressed out because I'm not making enough money and I'm not making enough money because I'm not educated enough and I shouldn't, I ha should have more experience, but I'm just really having a hard time with that. And all these different things really go down to one thing. It's the human hate program. I hate myself because I'm not good enough in the world and I'm not good enough. And so it's proof that the universe isn't helping me out now and that I'm backed up. Now I'm in more debt. That's because you kept being told that all of your wealth somehow defines what your value is. And that is, of course, psychopathy. So we're finished with all that. We're finished with it. It's time to look at yourself in the mirror. Life is short, folks. Life is short and it's no time to lose to be really being happy. And that's the thing. You can't be happy if you really aren't happy with yourself. And having been suicidal myself, homeless multiple times, and had quite the crazy life, finally getting to the point where when I look down at my body, I'm just amazed that I'm here. And that's something that, you know, not just amazed that I survived, which is everybody feels that way now <laughs> in the world, but amazed that I'm here on this planet in this body and that that's as simple as it gets. So work with these ideas, folks. Just notice. Notice what's happening around you and then swap it up a bit so that you can feel what it's like to actually have a positive outlook in the present about yourself and humanity around you. And don't worry about balance. That's something that the universe is really good at already. What your job is, is to notice when you resist the balance that's happening. And that's one of the hardest things to do is to notice that resistance. But if it's really hard for you to look in the mirror and say, I really love me and my body today, then start there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wonderfully put. And, you know, that calling it a program um, makes it a little bit easier to start spotting these things and seeing them as uh, outside of yourself, if you will, um, because of course, we're all love down to the core of our, you know, the core of our being, but there's all these layers and programs and conditioning and all the things that we get to live through as um, having the human experience. Um, but recognizing it as a program allows it to be a little more objectified, if you will, and then easier to parse out and tease out of your life and see, ah, that's just that nasty program that's making me feel like shit all the time, basically, <laughs> as opposed to I'm a piece of shit. It's going, ah. Um, and it's interesting as I say that because nothing's separate to us, but it's also part of um, navigating through what we're existing in right now. Yeah, I like the way you said it, though. Because you're, you're, you're accepting that you're having a subjective experience that you've been owning this program, that you think it's your own. And now you're objectifying the program and saying, actually, this is not me. And there's many other pieces to the self that is not you, like your personal history, your body, your family your genetics, these are, these don't create the sum total of you. And so that's that deep step into self inquiry of, mm. well, who am I? If you ask that every day, a few times a day, you're not going to get the answers you think you're going to get. It gets more and more interesting about what you actually are and keep going because it will become more and more clear that what our friend Nicola here is saying is true, that the thing that seems to love you into existence is actually you. And then you keep going deeper and you'll find out and I'll give you the secret. It's all made of light. It's all <laughs> made of light. Yeah. 
Mm. Beautiful. And on this note of light, this is a perfect segue. Um, I think there might be some confusion around what enlightenment is. And I know me personally would love to hear what your definition of this is. Um, yeah, I'd love to, because I think that's true. Yeah, enlightenment's super confusing. <laughs> we have so many people telling us all kinds of stuff. So, you know, I always thought enlightenment was something I could understand. And then I realized it literally isn't. Um, that's what I believe true enlightenment is. It's what they call the Tao. The thing that can be named is not the Tao. The thing, the way to describe enlightenment is not to describe it. And mm -hmm. it's really, it gets back down to now you only identify as being the light. Now you get down and down and down. You keep asking, who am I? And you find your way. And you end up finding that the secret way through into that state of being just light is actually backing into it. So there's a piece of it that requires surrender and willingness. Mm -hmm. And so we go into this and I'll give you an example of like a step towards enlightenment, right? That I just experienced this past week. And I knew it was a step towards enlightenment because I could feel the difference. And that's a very key piece. You can think your way into enlightenment, but right now you're being asked to feel your way, to use your whole body into this state. It's a state of mind. And this state of mind, I realized at one point, and I've always said this, that I don't believe in timelines, that it's more like an ocean, right? And that we make these micro navigation movements through this ocean of time that's already there. And we happen to think it's linear. It's definitely not. You're making micro movements in, into the infinite. And so, you know, we, we're used to having this idea of timelines. Well, I always tell people the best way for you to understand getting rid of timelines is to simply envision that there's these, all these timelines and they all go to the same place. They all go to source. <laughs> and so there's no one timeline that is actually better than another. There's this idea that we have to have the highest and best timeline. There's no such thing. They're all exactly amazing and perfect in their own right going home to source. That's the only direction they go. Well, if you're real, really willing to perceive that, that that's true, that all timelines are actually equal in their power and then their learning, then you end up feeling a little bit less trepidatious about the future because it's all going home the same way to back home to source. Well, then you become source. So you keep going to the destination while still conscious. And you're looking toward becoming that field of light. And you've catch yourself being finding that you're living a personal life, right? And then you realize, no, this is not the truth. I'm not this body. I'm not the personal life. I'm not the history. So who am I? Who am I? Inquiring into it all the way to its end degree when you have an awareness that you are the whole thing that you are experiencing, but that being 24 seven as a state of mind. And so enlightenment then is actually a slow drip process that can be supported through meditation, through emotional processing, through talking about these sort of things like this and through living it until you get fully used to going beyond just living in the moment and becoming this whole thing where there is no more time, where there is no more difference between you and the person in front of you. So it takes a lot of work because we've been established as personal, but you're not. And you are the sheet on which the marbles got placed and you are the marbles too. So, and you're not just you, you're also all the people listening. And it's a feeling. Your mind will try to convince you otherwise, of course, but the mind, when it becomes enlightened, 
stops even thinking about that kind of stuff in the first place. So it's a full body enlightenment process now, a little bit every day. But the cool part is, as you get deeper into this process, it happens faster. And so the exponents of light, the quotient of light moving through you becomes so intense and so clear. And the really, really deep ego stuff gets cleared so much faster and much more brutally in some cases that you find that you have no separation from that, which is light. So it's, um, it's harder, actually, the deeper you get in. It's more challenging the deeper you go towards becoming that. But then if you're really contemplating this, if you're really spending time on it, if you make it a lifestyle, then it ends up becoming something that is a source of endless joy that doesn't stop, uh, a source of happiness that doesn't have an end. And having, a, having got to that point now, I can honestly say this is a real process because I watched a lot of people do it and I've copied them to the best of my ability, modifying along the way. But I'm definitely finding that this enlightenment state is worth my time and worth my life, worth my energy because the other part of enlightenment, besides a good sense of humor, is that everything becomes a lot simpler, everything becomes easier, and the people around you thrive. They thrive in that light. I've watched my marriage, my children, my friends, my beautiful clients and students change so much as I change too. And it's not because of me, it's despite me. And it's because of source. I'm just looking forward at source all the time now without stopping relentlessly and watching that of course move through our experiences together the idea is that everything already is enlightened now it's just the discovery process of what that light is so it's purely about light and consciousness being the same finally getting to that point when there's no difference between any thought you're having and source or God, however you prefer to word that. So this is the key is to feel your way now. And I think now is a better opportunity than ever for this process, for this journey, if that's what you want. But the cool part too, is that if it's not what you want, that that's okay as well. And you're gonna be perfect exactly where you are. That's another part of the enlightenment process is perceiving perfection in all things and i'm getting a little closer every day it's truly a joy i'll never stop it's my absolute love in the whole world and universe is this process mm. yeah you know and it's there's such momentum to it once you start as well you kind of just get um carried along in the current as you go and become more aware of yourself and the world around you. And, um, and I think what's also really beautiful is that everyone, even if they're um, completely unaware of this concept of enlightenment, they're all, we're all streets um, reaching for source, whether we consciously know it or not, it's just part of um, being a living organism. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it also, um, I feel like that way of, of thinking about it and speaking about it and feeling it takes some of the, the weird pressure off around where we're um, sitting as a collective right now, where we're sort of talking about this new earth and all of the things. And it's a very exciting time but I think it can also bring up some other sort of conflicting emotions around it. Like what if it's not real, what if it doesn't happen and this and that. And it's just like, if we just focus on ourselves and as you said, as, as you find more light within yourself and just rediscover the light within yourself, everything and everyone around you changes because they get to experience that through you and your perception of the world changes as well. And that's, that's enough. That's enough. 
instead of sort yeah. of making it this big thing. Yeah, and you know, from what I've perceived in this process, enlightenment itself is not enough. You can attain it, but eventually the only way that it truly becomes enlightenment is when it happens because you're working towards the benefit of all beings. And that's the key piece that I think people forget because they see these teachers who say that they are enlightened, but then the teachers are charging, you know, exorbitant amount of money for, for small stuff, which is kind of one of those pieces that gives me a clue. Well, is this person really enlightened? <laughs> Cause if they were, then, then they'd be offering so much for free. And you notice that the really truly enlightened people are, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't be charging for your stuff. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that um, a clue is in how is that person truly in service? Mm -hmm. And so, um, and, and I stopped using the language um, selfless service. I ended up saying sovereign service. And that felt more true for these times of empowerment. And so this is why I always say to people, you know, if you need some help and um, you can't afford my session, then write me and we'll work something out. And so very few folks say that, but I think that's part of that being genuine and transparent piece because I won't turn anyone away. I'll work with anyone who shows up. Um, you know, a lot of folks would say, well, I'm not going to be on somebody's summit if they're brand new. Right. And I'm the opposite. I'm like, if they're brand new, then I definitely want to be on their summit, <laughs> <laughs> you know, cause that means that I'm in service to them, which is the appropriate way this should be. And finding myself <laughs> in the place where I can be empowering my friend Nicola today or empowering whoever shows up and putting as much light as possible, making as much accessible as possible. That's a, that's a clue about this process that that becomes the only goal then is a nice way to know that something's truly of the light. And so um, I, I love that there's a lot of healers and people out there who are listening and they want very much to be grounded in the world and know that they're still going to survive be be aware karma is instant it is not something that that you're gonna have to carry through a bunch of lifetimes i misunderstood karma very well as well and karma is instant and so if you're needing something in the world be as generous as you can be as grateful as you can and it will come through in ways that you never imagined because source is a better uh, imagineer than we are and if you give it up, if you're willing to surrender your life to service, selfless is not the name of the game anymore. Now you're in a sovereign state and you can work from there to be of service of all, to all beings. Start there. If you're concerned about the self-inquiry process and maybe you like me who says like, I'm a terrible meditator or I don't know about the emotional <laughs> processing. I've been doing that a while then at least start with sovereign service and being in gratitude and generosity and you'll find a way. The other thing too, that's harder to do, but just as necessary is if you have a judgment about someone, make sure you always take that same judgment and point it at yourself. Right? So if you're watching TV one day and you go, Oh my gosh, I hate that guy. He's so evil. Or, Oh my gosh, I just want to punch that one one person <laughs> mm -hmm. decide what it is you don't like about them and then ask yourself the same question how am I evil how have I been evil in my life how am I somebody who might annoy somebody so much they want to punch me how am I the same as this person because that person's you you are of source you are source you're not separate. So they're coming up in your attention for a reason so that they can show you what's most important to look at at that moment, but only from the inwards out. 
And so this, which is, this takes discipline. This, this one's a lot harder, <laughs> but it's still key to this process. Always point the finger back at yourself and dig in. Dig in with yeah. joy because you know that when you can uproot that density, that darkness in you, all the light's going to come streaming through and change everything. And then you won't hate people so much. You'll end up feeling, wow, I have compassion for them, actually, because, you know, maybe 10 steps different and I would have ended up in the same position as them. And what would I have done? Always ask that question. So that's a little more clarity of how all this ends up unfolding. Mm. And through the self-inquiry, you find greater compassion for yourself, which allows you to hold it for others as well. Exactly. Mm. And that's a, that's a big piece of this whole journey, I dare say, compassion and trust. <sighs> all right, so the new human, that you speak of. I say that's so Australian. I'm Canadian, but I live in Australia. <laughs> human. He's only human. Um, <laughs> the new human, Homo Luminous, and the real in internet, Indra's net, as you speak of. Can you please speak into how these are part of this shift that we're in right now? And are they related at all? Yeah, I think they are related. Um, Indra's net, so let's be clear about that first because that's something that we're using to connect to the higher idea of a very very different version of ourselves but the indra's net spelled i-n-d-r-a so indra is an ancient goddess she's the goddess of the cosmos she's a little bit kind of like brahma from the ancient hindu tradition except instead of being a man or masculine, it's feminine. So Indra is the basically a creator goddess. And I'm not completely like super savvy about her mythos, but the thing that I love the best is that the ancient people considered the whole of reality to be networked, that there was a line of energy between all conscious points, right? So what they were talking about is actually the first and second dimension and the first dimension of consciousness. Everybody always talks about the fourth, fifth, sixth, all these other ones, but they're forgetting like the coolest ones. <laughs> the first and second. So the first one has to do with consciousness, but this is assuming all reality is conscious, that everything is made of particles of consciousness. Well, I would argue that's true. And that quantum physics proves that to be true because whenever you observe something, you change it and by observing it. And so the power of consciousness is many fold. So if everything and all of the, what we see is the atomic world is made of particles of consciousness, you know, subatomic particles are cool, but if you go even smaller, you're going to find literal particles of consciousness. This is not something that um, I'm just kind of pulling out of mysticism, actually. This is a whole branch of, of theoretical physics. So um, it sounds like mysticism, though, doesn't it? <laughs> it yeah. They kind of are intertwined. That's why it's mm -hmm. science and mysticism that we look at together. So we have all these particles of consciousness, but then they have relationships with each other. So if one happens to one thing, well, it creates a ripple effect, literally, in atoms, in reality, all the way to the edge of the universe. And everything's entangled because they all started at the same point of consciousness, the beginning of the universe. So everything's entangled. And that's a quantum physics term, which means another term we might say it's part of the net. It's actually networked versus entangled when you pluck one piece of the web the whole rest of the web is affected and that's what quantum entanglement really means when two particles are entangled one happens well, something happens to one of them and although the other one might be 150 million light years away the other particle is affected well this happens constantly mm -hmm. and 
it's so dramatically complex that now you're starting to imagine with me a neur neural network of living change. That's Indra's net and you're part of it. You are actually a receiver transmitter for the net. So you're much more than just a particle on it or a part of a net. You're actually more powerful than that. You can push huge waves of change with consciousness throughout that network all day long. If you're, say, on a path towards trying to be more and more one with source or more and more one with God or whatever it is that it is that you're trying to raise your consciousness in some way, shape, or form. People might simply just call it raising your vibe, right? When you're doing that, you're actually pushing huge amounts of power and energy out onto this network. So Ender's Net's a real, actual, measurable thing. And we measure it in lots of different scientific experiments. One of them, I would say, a, a clue about this net is how galactic and quantum anthropology came to light all at the same time all over the world with different people who happen to be primed to be a receiver for this information. Mm. And so we know this is true because it happened to a lot of other people like Nikola Tesla and Einstein and other folks out there, men and women alike. So we have this network that's real and measurable. And as more and more people are aware of a different type of humanity a, a different way to be human and they're realizing that the old cycles the old ways of doing things literally we're standing on them we couldn't have got here without them but now they don't work anymore for a lot of different reasons i would argue it's our place in space literally where the earth is right now and its cycle with the solar system cycle the galactic cycle a lot of different things are all kind of coming into play at once. But when you have a major species change, that's going to be caused by a species being driven to its extent of stress that it can handle. And that's exactly what's happened to humanity. I really highly doubt anyone can argue with that at the moment. And we're pushed to the brink now. So what happens? Well, the species has to change. And what's occurring is there's a, a sort of fake version of Indra's net that's in competition with, and I don't think they have to be in competition. So I don't use these things, I don't use the internet as a thing that I know is competing with Indra's net. I choose to use both at the same time. And so I'm meditating on that network that I'm part of. I feel one with everything when I do that. I can sense my friends and their thoughts, their needs, my family, all the different people that I care about. I can sense them. I can feel them. I know what's going on on that network. But I can also use the fake internet or what we might call the smaller internet because it's much smaller. We're going to use that too to connect too. But I want you to feel the real internet because it's networked through your body, through the earth, through the mycelium, through the bacteria. It's networked through your nervous system, the primovascular system, which is a brand new system that's discovered. It literally moves photons around the body. Go look that up. Primovascular system. It's a new system we just discovered. If anybody tells you that we know everything about the human body, they're lying. We've discovered new systems and new organs in the past few years, folks. This is how uh, little we know about our bodies. And so um, sweeping broad ideas about health aren't real because <laughs> we really don't know that much about our bodies. And we're knowing, we found out real clearly, everybody's unique. Each human is unique. You have a unique biome and a unique biome history that can't be replicated. So that's even cooler. <laughs> that means it's really special that you're here and you're part of a network of humanity that is now aware of a bigger situation and a more micro quantum level situation that we're in all at once. And we're being pushed to the brink of our stress as a species. So that means it's time. It's time for what's called punctuated equilibrium. 
It means a big burst of equilibrium happening all at once. Stephen Jay Gould, he came up with that concept, punctuated mm -hmm. equilibrium. It happens when we hit the stress point. Now we're bottlenecking through stress into a moment of change. And I don't see it as a bad thing. I see it as an excellent thing. It's going to be really hard. And at the end of every age and at the end of uh, a species change, there's a lot of people who check out. That's normal. That's part of a cycle that happens. And so if we're okay, if we really trust that, that's going to unfold the way that it needs to perfectly, which is so hard to do when you're watching a lot of this human hate program, especially running this show. So, you know, we want to make sure that we're on board with this shift and trying not to take everything so personally while still being willing to step into it as a species. That's what Homo Luminous is. Homo Luminous is this network coming fully online, the awareness of the species change occurring, all simultaneously occurring with a disaster cycle, sun changes occurring all at the same time, many gateways opening all at once in a mathematical level of impossibility. That's happening nonetheless. <laughs> so here we are <laughs> at the brink of becoming a new species. It's literally what I'm saying. And your awareness of Indra's net is going to help you to step into what that might be and how that looks and feels. I don't know. But I know I'm a little bit closer there every day because I'm watching all of these beautiful things unfold and powerful changes happening faster than I ever dreamed. Things are happening so fast, folks. It's like surfing a tsunami. Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> and we're going to get through this. We'll see what happens on the other side. But I believe in us. I believe in the extraordinary power of humankind. We always get underestimated every yeah. time. And then we show up to be some of the most powerful beings in this galaxy that this place has ever known. And that's the coolest part about being human is that's your legacy. That's who you are. It doesn't matter exactly what you've accomplished in this life. Don't worry about that. Focus inward. Like we said, go inward and you'll find what you're looking for and you'll find that path. And then you'll find that the right exact people show up in your life to help you manifest that path. My friends. Yes. Yes. Yeah, we've been underestimated and we've underestimated ourselves. And that's a beautiful uh, key takeaway is just not to underestimate the power that we hold within us. Um, I love that Indra is is a goddess, the, the go goddess of the cosmos, I think. Is that what you, yeah, what she is? Yeah, that's amazing. the goddess of creation. Mm -hmm. Goddess of creation, amazing. And when you've spoken of it and I've felt into this, I've kind of, it's felt, I felt it as everything outside of me. And I love how you just brought that into our own microbiome and everything that's within us as well. And it, it, it assists in the expansion of our cosmic consciousness and how I just love to picture myself dissolving and, and being at one with everything you know that 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 feeling allows me to sit in that that soup if you will and um and experience that mm. Mm, yeah and imagine all those particles we're all orbiting each other we're all made of frequency and light which is the same thing and we're all moving home to the same place some things take a little longer than others but we're all ending up in that same place together. That's what equanimity is. And that's how it can feel one, how you can feel one with everything. Start there with that visual. And you can see, oh, it's true. My curtains may not dissolve as fast as my body, but they're all going to the same place. <laughs> my house might be staying here for a while, but... Uh, you know, it all go home to source eventually, just like me. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Mm. So my final question, Elizabeth, what are you grateful for? Oh, thank you. That's super sweet. 
Right now I'm grateful for people like you, of course, on the network who are awake and on Indra's net who are doing their best to be in sovereign service and who are really working hard at that self inquiry process. I'm especially grateful right now for mother earth and the land as I've been spending a lot of time on the land and mm. living a very simple, basic life that is um, allows for a lot of opportunity for oneness. I'm deeply grateful, especially for this place in Ecuador and the way that the light here is more available and everything. It's, it's a very literal thing. We're closer to the sun. We're the closest to the sun here than anywhere on earth. Wow. And we have more available light and everything. There's so much power in the elements that I'm noticing too. Like being able to just sit and what we joke around. Instead of TV, we, we light fires at night and call it fire TV. <laughs> 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 or we watch the clouds get formed. Or we climb up into the butterfly forest and look at the hundreds of types of butterflies there on the land that we're on. Discovering new things and mysteries in the elements that I've never discovered before. And I'm also, but really grateful, especially for the people that show up, who are really showing up right now, because the way that they get to receive um, all of this, what's happening, the, the changes and everything is what feeds back into the network. And that keeps um, humanity hopeful. It keeps them thriving. It keeps us moving forward and striving. So I'm super grateful for those things right now. And that's the experience I've been having. Um, and for all the people who are standing on the edge, we're on the edge of a pre precipice. And you know what happens to humanity when there's an edge as big as humanity, we all end up in a big straight line. There's nobody leading. There's nobody following. We're all at the edge together, linking arms. If you want to jump off together, you can. If you hang back for a while and chill, you can. But nonetheless, there's the opportunity, and equanimity is at hand. That's what is available, and I'm very grateful for that. It's at hand. Mm, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. That was really beautiful. I always marvel in the moments where I do pause to notice how spectacular this world is. It's, it's this, I always joke this whole, <laughs> what I learned from having my awakening that it's cooler than any sci-fi movie you could ever <laughs> hope to see. <laughs> yeah. And same earth is, you know, we often, it's such a beautiful, Again, another example of we look outside of ourselves for all of this inspiration and this and that, and it's all just right here at hand at our fingertips. Ah, yes. My daughter, she's five, and we went up on this big hike up to the butterfly forest. And we were walking um, towards a big mandarin orange tree that grows up there, and it's some of the best candy in the world, right? So we're sitting there and my sister, she, or my daughter, she looks at me and she says, she's five. And she says, mom, I wish I was dreaming this, but I think it is a dream. But I think I'd like this to also be in my other dreams. And I said, that's <laughs> right, honey. This is a dream. And you can have this in your other dreams. It's all a dream. And she really understood it fully in that moment. Like, she's like, yep, sure is. <laughs> she was very clear. <laughs> she totally understood at what a dream it really was. And wow. that's how you appreciate all the little things, my friends. It's being dreamed into existence just like you. Yeah. Ah. Thank you. Now, Thank you, Elizabeth. sweetheart. <laughs> you have... Um, provided everyone a little bundle package of gifts, uh, which they can find at nicolahenderson.co slash gratitude series, which will be linked in the comments. 
Um, we have the monthly circle community call, which is always amazing. Um, your third eye development masterclass, the horizons EP, a really cool song that will get you in the zone. Uh, your ebook, Healing the Three Minds, the Brain, Heart, and Gut, and a Galactic Forgiveness Meditation, which is pretty hardcore as well. Um, just like the badass that you are, Elizabeth, one of my, why I love you. Um, so yes, you can find that and download that at your leisure. Um, this will always be available to watch again, if you wish, as well. Um, and in closing, deepest gratitude again to you, Elizabeth. It is an honor to be shoulder to shoulder, holding hands, heart to heart with you now, bringing and ringing in the new earth. I celebrate you. I celebrate humanity. And I celebrate life. Here's to life. Here's to life. Namaste. May I offer you a gift of light language now mm -hmm. <sighs> hmm. nai ayasa namaa Kaini u a sakai na i a siki i na moi kakai na ma a. Shiny kakai na mo sakai kai na mo shi kai kakai na mo ku ai kaka. Ni ai i a sa na ma u e a sa ya na ma i a ya kaka. Ni siki ai na mai i i i ai a sa ya ki ya. Pushi ika namaya gaya namaya kaya sakai i. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. And thank you to everyone for tuning in live or watching the replay. It has been such a gift to share this experience with you all. Have a blessed morning, afternoon, or night.